Howdy. Thank you. <clears throat> so announcements. Uh, I saw some of you wrote the line that Emily cannot escape. That was a joke. That was from a movie. So it's not really gay. I want to make sure you get that. Um, all right. Um, your exam three review sheet is posted and the practice questions are posted as well. So make sure you check them out. Uh, so you remember this picture? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So next week, uh, my friend over here, she's coming here to visit me from North Carolina and she's buying my car. So uh, she'll be here on Wednesday. Uh, she also listened to my class as well. She's also a PhD student in North Carolina. Uh, and we will take the class picture on Wednesday 21st. If you want to, you can be here. We will try to take it at the end and she will help us to take the picture. If you don't want to be in the picture, that's fine too. You can just leave at the class. Uh, for online students, I will just uh, have your pictures showed on the big screen here and we can try to get a picture together. Yep, and again, if you don't want to be in the picture, that's fine too. Uh, and just for myself, uh, personal interest. I want to uh, get to know my students in the future. And if you su you're successful in the future, feel free to reach out and let me know what you guys are doing. Uh, I'll be happy to hear that. Uh, how many of you are planning to go into grad school? Oh, a lot, a lot. OK. Um, so there are some articles. Uh, it's talking about grad students and mental health. Um, so when I say grad students, what comes to your mind? Like anything outside, like after like education past your undergrad, mm -hmm. like master's or like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, just some of that first thing. I'm still 4 a.m. Okay. <laughs> uh, Okay, exhausting, probably a lot of work. Okay, what else? Yeah. Suicide rate doubles. Okay. Wow. For medical school. Okay. What else? So, would you say it's because of stress? Okay, it's kind of really a lot of work, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So you get the title. Okay. And people will stop calling you Mr. or Miss, you know, like doctor or something. Right. Okay. What else? What kind of impressions do you have when you heard the word? So you think grad students are smart? Okay. All right. Do you think that grad students are broke as hell? <laughs> yeah, they're broke as hell. Uh, yeah, that's true. But usually, it doesn't matter. Uh, even if you got like grants, usually they don't pay you very well. Uh, it's usually for research projects. Okay. Your stipend is not very high. Okay. What else? For those who wants to go into grad school, what's your impression? Like, what do you imagine when you become a grad student? Um, a lot of research. Like, depends, depends what your, like, your grad program is. Mm -hmm. It could be like theory based, and it's more of like hands on research or writing more important. It depends on the question. Like, yeah, I feel like for me, it's going to be like a lot of research and like theory stuff. Okay, a lot of research. All right. Any other thoughts? Oh no. What about honor students? Do they say anything? No? Okay. So uh so basically your impressions are pretty accurate. Uh it's a lot of work. It's also five to eight years of your life uh living with like a 
priority status. Uh, that's a long time. So I get paid 2000 per month. And after tax is about 1700. So it's not a lot. Um, some schools, they ask you to pay fees as well. So for our schools, for our departments, they just got rid of the fees, uh, which is good. If they don't get rid of that, I will pay 1400 per semester. So it's my, like my, a month on my salary. So that's a lot of money. So you constantly are thinking about uh, your living, your rent and stuff like that. But that's also pretty lucky for grass. I mean, PhD students, because they get paid. If you get into a master program, you need to pay tuition and you don't get paid uh, unless you can apply for jobs and stuff. A perk for getting a PhD is that uh, your tuition is covered. Uh, so we don't need to pay for tuition. Um, so it's like pros and cons. You get paid very little, but you don't need to pay tuition and so you get a higher education. But that's a huge chunk of your life. So talk to people, talk to professors and grad students if you really think about going to grad school. And also it's a lot of stress. When you go into grad school, uh, people might think that you're smart, but you don't think so. Like yourself will think that you're dumb as well. That's true uh, because you just don't know what to do in, in grad school and then you're lost all the time. Um, so that creates a lot of stress. So you're right, the suicide rate is increased uh, if you go into grad school. I don't know the exact numbers for medical school. Uh, I'll take your word for it. But uh, they are at least six times more likely to get anxiety disorders or depression disorders than a common population. So it's a lot of stress. I'll take those into consideration. Those two are pretty cool studies that they have done and it's on the news. So if you're interested, take a look at that. That sounds a little depressing. So I'm gonna lighten the, up the mood a little, little bit. So here is a pretty accurate description of grad students, but very funny. I'm gonna taunt the PhDs. Hey guys, I heard an assistant professorship just opened up. Oh, yeah. At the University of Psych! <laughs> I was so bored I cut the ponytail off the guy sitting in front of us. Look at me, I'm a grad student. I'm 30 years old and I made $600 last year. Bummer, don't make fun of grad students. They just made a terrible life choice. <laughs> No food for you grad students till you grade 3,000 papers. That's actually pretty funny. So I used to do, uh, I used to do a lot of things for free food. Like I would give out uh, guest talks and seminars and psych clubs, stuff like that. And then they would pay me with food. Uh, if you think about it, that's actually like not a lot of rewards, but we're willing to do it because we're so broke. Uh, what else? And then getting a job could be difficult uh, because when you get into grad school, you're most likely to stay in academia. Nowadays is that we have a lot of universities, we have a ton of grad students, but not a lot of positions. Because once a professor gets tenured, they will stay there for their whole life. So it's not like, the positions are opening up very quickly, right? You have to wait until someone is retired or someone is dead, and then that position is open. So yeah, um, that's grad schools. Uh, okay, so uh, how many of you finished the research requirement? Okay, most of you, very good. Well, if you haven't, make sure you do that quickly because the end of the semester and uh, get busy with research credits. So for today's agenda, we are going to finish the categories of psychological disorders. Uh, of course, we're not covering
Is this flashing or? Okay. I thought it was my screen or something. Yeah. Okay, if it keeps keeps flashing, let me know. I'll try to figure that out. Um, so we're not covering all the disorders. Uh, I'm just trying to cover some important disorders. Um, but if you're interested, again, the DSM-5 is free. You can rent it or you can borrow it from the library. Yeah. And then we're gonna talk about some therapy. So today we will cover psychoanalytic and humanistic. That's annoying. So schizophrenia. This is when the patient or the person cannot distinguish what is real from fantasy. And schizo is like split. Um, it means split. Then that's mind schizophrenia. So split mind. So this is not really. That's really annoying. Sorry, I just making a computer. In the screen? Yeah, that doesn't say anything to me right now. Okay. All right. Hey, we'll see. Um, so wow, that's really annoying. One second. Okay, so I uh, kind of lost what I was saying, but schizophrenia is when the person cannot distinguish what's real and what's fantasy, and they have disturbed thinking, emotion, perception, and behavior because of that. So the onset is around adolescence or early adulthood, and the ratio is about one in 100. So I would say it's pretty common. Design. That means a break from the reality. One example is Louis Wine, and he is a painter. And you can see how he progressed through his painting with his um, schizophrenia. And this is at the beginning when he draws a cat. Right, you can see the progression, right? Um, to their behavior or painting. Uh, so next, I'm going to show you an example, uh, which is a video that the person is describing having schizophrenia. Your son, don't, don't get up. You're good. Don't you? Sure. Anything. Stop what you're doing. Don't do anything. Stay in your bed all day. Hi, I'm Michelle Hammer, and I have schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a mental illness that changes the way you think, feel, and act. It's broken down into three separate categories, positive, negative, and cognitive. Positive symptoms don't mean they're a good thing. It's an add-on to your normal behavior. Things like hallucinations, delusions, and voices. You know, I had so many ghosts and shadows inside of my mind. A demon was perching on the end of my bed. Negative symptoms take away from your behavior. I showed no emotion and I was just totally out of it. 
Cognitive symptoms make it hard to pay attention and hard to focus. Your brain is just racing. It can't stop. The pathology of these illnesses has only become recently understood. Schizophrenia is different for everyone. My symptoms aren't like everybody else's. My first symptom of schizophrenia was pretty much just zoning out, thinking I was in a different place. Then it turned into kind of voices in my head that just plagued me over and over again. I thought my mother was trying to hurt me. I didn't know what to do about anything because I thought everyone had it out for me, so I didn't know who to go to for help. Sometimes I kind of hear a voice more coming from the right side of my head saying like, everyone hates you, stop what you're doing, don't do anything, nothing, nothing. Well, it's kind of like the other side of me is kind of arguing back with the voice. Don't worry about anything, chill, just chill, breathe, chill, just chill, you can get the right. It's kind of just like the thing is, who's gonna win, who's gonna win, who's gonna win? When I take my medicine, the good sign wins. I mean, living in the city and having schizophrenia is interesting just because, you know, I do hear voices as I'm walking down the street. So in my head, I'm thinking of the person talking to me, but then I start talking back to the person. And then maybe I'll snap out of it, look around, and like five people are staring at me. But mostly I kind of just get plagued by thoughts that are just so repetitive in my head and they just go around over and over and over again, when really I just want it to be nice and quiet and silent. All through high school, I had this like really crazy paranoid delusion that my mother was trying to kill me. Kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. Every time she went to try to get me to a therapist or anything, because she knew something wasn't right, I always thought she was trying to ruin my life. So when I went to college, I thought I was free of her, and everything was great. And then all of a sudden, my best friend, my roommate, I started thinking the exact same things about her. So realizing that I had the problem was like the start of the entire thing. And that was the hardest thing to do, I think, realizing there was a problem. At 18, I was told I was bipolar, but I kind of knew that diagnosis was incorrect. So at 22, I spoke to a different doctor and I was more honest with him and he diagnosed me with bipolar. schizophrenia and that was like the best thing that ever happened to me because he got me on the right medication and I feel as good as I can possibly feel right now. All right, uh, any questions? Uh, also, everyone's symptoms are different. So it's not like that symptoms apply to her and applies to every single person who uh, is suffering with schizophrenia. Okay, so there are two different symptoms uh, and you need to have two symptoms frequently for at least a month to be diagnosed. Uh, we have the positive symptoms and the negative symptoms. Uh, positive symptoms, it means that you have something that's added to your normal behavior or perception. And negative symptoms is, means that your normal behavior is absent. Okay, so Positive symptoms uh, include uh, disorganized thoughts, hallucination, delusions, disorganized speech, and etc. The negative symptoms include reduced speech, black effects, so it means that they don't have a lot of emotions, social withdrawal, don't really interact with people, and the absence of pleasure and motivation. So those are some of the symptoms for schizophrenia. Okay. So disorganized speech, uh, we have neologisms. So that means they have a newly created word uh, whose meaning is unknown to others. So they create their own word. One example will be, the only problem I have is my question lady. It's not a word. Another type of disorganized speech will be loose association. So that's a series of ideas that are presented with loosely apparent or completely inapparent logical connections. And one example will be 
He went to the ballpark and bought Frank's beer belly home in a bag of grass seed. Sometimes I don't know if you've seen uh, people who are homeless and then they're talking to themselves and then talking nonsense. It's possible that they have this sort of disorganized speech or they have schizophrenia. Okay. Another type will be clan association. That's when the words are chosen for their related sounds rather than logical meanings. One example will be the run, sun, done, the gun, don't drink, drown, down, brown, gun. So that's something that those people would say. And word salad. Uh, we kind of mentioned this before when we talk about Frisia, right? So that's random words or phrases linked together in an often unintelligible manner. For example, Blue eye ran the cat's car smelly house. What ghostly foo swimming? Something like that. All right, so those are some of the different types of disorganized speech if people have schizophrenia. They also have disorganized thoughts. So they have fake or false beliefs about the world and they tend to remain fixed, even when faced with contradictory evidence. This reminds me of the flat earther. So a lot of people, they believe that the earth is flat, even if they are shown uh, a lot of evidence. It's not saying that they are having schizophrenia, uh, it's just, it just reminds me of that kind of symptoms, right? Okay, uh, any questions about disorganized speech and disorganized thoughts? Speech training? Good. So the causes for schizophrenia, uh, there are several. The one is the biological factors. This includes uh, inherited inherited. So what we found that people who are identical twin, they're more likely, if one person has schizophrenia, the other person are more likely to have schizophrenia. And that's the risk. It's about 50%, half and half. And then that will be the rate in the general population, about 1%, 1 in 100. And you can see if they're related in genes or family pools, you're more likely to have this higher correlation of having schizophrenia. So they can be inherited. Another one will be the brain abnorm abnormalities. So if we see um, people with schizophrenia, their brain activities uh, will be different from a normal person with or without a stimulant, because sometimes they can see something that's not there. They will stimuli their, their brain on their own. Okay. okay. And then some other causes include psychological and social factors. The learning experiences that could influence or trigger people with schizophrenia. Stress could be a trigger. And then weed, uh, so marijuana and people's genes can be a combination to lead to schizophrenia. So here is a study for people who had a certain gene and if they did uh, marijuana in their teenage, age, teenage years, the likelihood that they will get uh, schizophrenia is much higher than those who doesn't do marijuana. But if you don't know if you have that gene, I think it's called AMP or COMP. There are several genes. Don't do marijuana if you don't have to. Uh, increase the risk. Also, 
uh, pregnancy, marijuana use, or pregnancy uh, tobacco use to influence the risk of having schizophrenia too. So in summary, uh, marijuana and tobacco, I would say they're, the risk of taking them is much bigger than the benefits that people claim that they have. So if you don't have to, don't take them. Yeah. This? Uh, so those will be the participant numbers. And that's the, uh, wait, hold on. Oh, so those are the genotypes for people who doesn't have that gene versus people who have that gene. Okay, so this one is the one who has the genes and took marijuana. The yellow bars are the ones who haven't taken the marijuana. All right. So it kind of shows that uh, if you have taken marijuana, your risk is always a little bit higher than the people who uh, doesn't have that gene compared if you have the genes. So your risk goes up no matter what uh, if you have the genes. But I will say the difference here is not big if you don't take marijuana, if that makes sense. If you take marijuana, the big difference. Sometimes I, I don't know how familiar or your ability to read graph. So if you don't understand something, let me know and I'll try to interpret it for you. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have the diathesis stress or the stress volunteer vulnerability model. Uh, if you remember, we kind of talked about this when we talk about other disorders. So basically saying that you don't develop the disorder unless you're exposed to environmental or emotional stress at critical times in development, such as puberty. So you need to have the predisposition or your genes, and then you need some kind of stressor to trigger that. That's based on this model. All right. If you don't have any questions, I'm going to have you to do a practice question. Uh, you're a clinical psychologist meeting with a schizophrenic patient who says to you, my real name is Abel, a bell, you know, like Maybell, Bell Jar, Bella Jordan, Batman in the Bell. What symptom has the patient just reviewed? My association. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Okay, pretty good. So because they sound alike, so my association. All right, next we have personality disorders. This is very different from the disorders that we just mentioned. So for the people who have this uh, personality disorders, um, it's more likely for them to be unaware that they have the symptoms or they have the disorders. For example, a psychopath or, um, or narcissists, they usually don't think that they have the problem. They think everyone has the problem, if that makes sense. They think they're normal. Uh, compared to the disorders that we just talked about. Yep. So for a schizophrenia patient, they might be aware that, okay, I am the one who has the problem, right? But this is kind of opposite uh, for personality disorders. Okay, so those are long standing, inflexible ways of behavior that create problems uh, when you have the personality disorders. The onset is in childhood or adolescence. And there are three disorders divided into three clusters. I'm gonna talk about those one by one. So sometimes people will ask the questions, are this considered mental disorders? Because sometimes you can vary uh, among cultures. So maybe someone would just say those people are odd or they're selfish. Uh, what else? They're just violent. And they're less likely to label them as personality disorders. 
So that could be a discussion um, for you if you're interested. How do we diagnose them? How do we use those criteria? Right. Okay, so first we have the cluster A uh, personality disorders. And we also call it the odd eccentric cluster. First type will be paranoid. So that's when the person is suspicious, distrustful of others, and they assume other people to be hostile. And then we have schizoids. That's the person having negative symptoms of schizophrenia. If you remember negative symptoms, it means that you have some kind of normal behaviors are absent, such as socially detached, restricted emotions. You don't feel when you are experiencing some kind of emotional event. That's the chart. And then we have schizotypical, uh, schizotypal. So that will be the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Uh, also includes socially detached, odd thoughts, behavior. Um, so the reason for socially detached here could be different from here. So for here, it could be that they have the positive symptoms. So they don't want to interact with other people because they think that they're unreal or they don't want to make a mistake and talking to the person who are not there and then people look at them clearly. And they're not disturbed enough to be diagnosed as schizophrenia. So they just have those symptoms. So if you remember, yeah. Yes, yes. So if you remember, we are talking about symptoms in those disorders, but we're also talking about you need to have at least certain quite of symptoms and then for a certain amount of time to be diagnosed. Sometimes those symptoms can overlap. So that will be cluster A. Cluster B is also called the dramatic erratic cluster. First one will be the histrionic uh, personality disorder. That's when people are having uh, excessive emotionality and they must be the center of attention. And they're emotionally shallow. Right. Sometimes we call people, oh, you're too emotional, right? That's kind of like the symptoms of having this histrionic personality disorder, but maybe it's not that severe. Okay. And then narcissistic. That's when the person has exaggerated its own importance. They're aggregate. Uh, and they lack of empathy, so they cannot sympathize with others. Then we have the borderline personality disorder. That's when the person has intense, unstable emotions and relationships. They have increased impulsivity. Uh, they have suicidal gestures. They have angry outbursts. They're very clingy as well. So those are symptoms for borderline disorders. And lastly, we have the antisocial uh, personality disorder. That's when the person has lack of remorse. Uh, they might have superficial trauma because sometimes people will perceive them as being assertive, right? They are um, calm when they are in certain situations. They also tend to violate other people's rights. I'm gonna read you a quote. So this person called Henry Lee Lucas, have you heard of the, that person? So he murdered uh, about 360 men, women, and children. So in his quote is that, I think of killing like smoking a cigarette, like another habit. So they don't have any remorse. And do you guys know the case for Chris Watts, who killed his wife and children? 
I embedded that link here. Uh, if you're interested, you can take a look at that. But for the person who can uh, kill their family members and their children cold blooded, and then he pretended he doesn't know what's going on. He even went to interviews, go to uh, news stations, um, and finally to call him. So I would say he probably have entire social personality disorder. Okay, so that would be cluster B. Uh, any questions? So have you heard of psychopath, sociopath? So those are actually not disorders. Uh, those are more like um, a symptom or how do normal people describe uh, a person with antisocial personality disorders? So you cannot say you have, you're a so sociopath or you're a psychopath and that's a disorder. That's not accurate. Okay, uh, next we have the cluster C, and we also call this the anxious, fearful cluster. Um, the first type will be the dependent personality disorder, and that's when the person has excessive need to be taken care of, submissive, and helpless. Next, we have the obsessive compulsive personality disorders. So this is different from the OCD that we mentioned last time. This is more of the personality disorder. So they are uh, preoccupied with others. Um, they like to control and keep things clean. So they're very sim similar. Um, but when we take out OCD uh, to talk about that, as a individual disorder, uh, it just sometimes uh, the severity can be different, right? And there are a lot of changes in the DSM. So through one to five, uh, they used to categorize uh, homosexuality as a mental disorder in DSM four, and then they now changed it to DSM five, and they got rid of that. And also, what else? Uh, they had the gender identity disorder. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Uh, I think it was called gender dysphoria, and they changed it. Uh, um, sometimes I feel like uh, those criteria can be influenced by uh, politics mm -hmm. as well. If they're not politically correct in that period of time, they would need to change that. And then we have the avoidant personality disorders. Uh, that's when they are oversensitive to criticism. They have the feelings of inadequacy and inhibition in social situations. So that will be cluster A, B, and C in personality disorders. Uh, you don't really need to memorize the definition. Uh, you just need to look at the term and you understand what does that mean. And when a person is diagnosed with that disorder, what kind of symptoms they have. I will say they're pretty different from each other. It's less likely that you get confused. So uh, that's good. Okay, uh, a practice question. Buffy kids going around ramming wooden stakes through the hearts of Sunnydale students. She doesn't feel bad about it at all. Her guidance uh, counselor thinks she may have what personality disorder? Okay. okay. Very good. Anti social. Very good. Uh, next, we are going to talk about some therapy, so psychotherapy. Uh, and we are going to talk about psychoanalytic. If you remember psychoanalytic, uh, do you remember the person who developed this? Yeah, so unconsciousness, right. Okay, so in psychoanalytic uh, therapy, the assumptions are people are driven by sexual and aggressive instincts. And they have conflicts among their id, ego, and superego. So they try to explore childhood events to help understand psychological problems. 
And that's when you see in the movies or TV shows, they ask, oh, tell me about your childhood. What did you experience? That's more like, like another. And another uh, stereotype is that they will ask the patient to sit or lay down. Then the psychologist will be sitting next to them and they ask questions. That's psychoanalytic. The goal for this kind of therapy is to gain insight by understanding unconscious thoughts, emotions, and conflicts. See? So there are several strategies to do that, uh, to getting uh, understand patients' unconsciousness. First is hypnosis. Then we have dream interpretation. So they ask the person to tell them, what did you dream about? And they would try to interpret what that means. So it's kind of like uh, the personality test that we did last time, trying to give you like a, an ambiguous thing and I ask you to interpret it for me. But in here, it's more like the psychologist is interpreting your dreams. For example, if you dream uh, that you, uh, trying to think, for example. Okay, so let's say you talk to your, psychologist and said that uh, oh, I had a dream that I had sex with a girl and then they might interpret that okay it's because you have that complex you like the girl and she doesn't like you or something like that I'm just making it up but you understand how they interpret dreams okay so that's just an example and then they have free association so this is when I give you a word and then you tell me very quickly what's the first thing comes to your mind if I say red and then what's the first thing that comes to your mind? And then you just say it immediately. Okay. So does anyone wants to be a volunteer to play this game? I'm gonna show you a list of words. Then as soon as I show you that, you say out loud what's, what comes to your mind. Anyone? You wanna do it? Okay. All right. Are you ready? Okay. Don't think, just say it out loud. That's too slow. All right. Yeah. All right. You ready? Yeah. Are you just reading? Yeah, I just like when, when. Okay. All right. Water. So that would be an example. Uh, there was uh, one class that I had, uh, I forgot it was last year or the year before. Um, I had more expressive words here. So like that, um, racism and stuff. It got pretty dark. One person, one, one student, the volunteer, when I showed that, he said, mom, now that crap. Uh, so I had to get rid of that and then find some not as uh, crazy words to, to show in class. But you get the idea, right? So if you say, let's say I, I'm going to use that student as an example. When I show that, and then he said, mom. And then we will need to figure out what happened there. Is it because you want your mom to die or is it because she recently passed away or something like that so and then same thing with other words if there's some something that's a disturbing response we will need to figure out what's happening does that make sense okay so that's free association all right so here is the freudian slip that's an error in speech, memory, or physical action that occurs due to the interference of an unconscious wish or internal train of thoughts. I'm gonna show you a quick example here. Aaron, again, congratulations on your big Hooters. Uh, the uh, oh, Hooters you, win. You said what? Wow, that was a slip of the tongue. Oh. The team started slowly not picking up Portland's uh, double penetration. Trust me, you're gonna love my one-eyed monster. <laughs> Northwest began serving penis, peanuts this month. Georgia is the top penis pr pr peanut producing state. Here's a black cock helicopter. Black cock 
Holocaust. Tanya Mosley is live at the park where protesters are set to pinch tits. Tickets online at Pick a Dick. Pick. Oh, no. Well, you're thinking about sausage. So. <laughs> Sask Energy is announcing a proposal to jack off, uh, up the cost. Broward Sheriff's deputies arrest a man who they say has more pussy than he can. Okay, so you get the idea, right? So according to uh, Freudian uh, or psychoanalytic therapy, they will claim that that's because they, their unconscious thoughts are they're thinking about it, or that's the most available thing in their mind. That's why they have the Freudian. Okay. Okay. So the limitations for psychoanalytic therapy is that there's lack of scientific research. So you can't really test their hypothesis. It's very hard to examine. And they assume every problem had to do with unconsciousness and sex, which I, I don't really agree. And the availability heuristic, uh, or is it a mental problem? For example, if you, those uh, news reporters, I don't know, what if they just watched porn before they went to work? And that's the most available um, heuristic. And then they just live it out. It's not like they are constantly thinking about it. It's not like their personal problems, right? Okay. So that was psychoanalytic uh, therapy. And then we have humanistic therapy. This is something that we talked about before. So I'll go through them very quickly. So the assumption is that uh, the disorders are due to failure of innate drive to grow and their subjective perceptions of events. The goal here is to help patients to self accept and try to remove their blocks to actualization so that they can restart their natural growth tendency. Right. So that's again based on the Maslow. Uh, model. So we think the humanistic and positive therapy, excuse me, we have the person client centered therapy. This suggests that growth is facilitated by acceptance and genuine direction from therapists. The unconditional positive regards means that therapists accept their clients unconditionally. It tolerates differences without being judgmental. So empathy is a very important factor here. So you need to understand clients' emotional experience. And authenticity, so you need to give them a genuine, open, honest response. And this also leads to the hands-off therapy. So it means that the therapist, the psychologist, they are very, they're not um, non-directive. They let the patient to direct the conversation. So the advantage for this kind of therapy is that uh, this is very accessible to the patients. So if they like it, they were more likely to go to the therapy next time. And this is very useful for career choices, work problems, and marriage counseling. So when people talk it out loud, sometimes they will realize where the problem is. If you don't talk it, uh, you just it's just in your mind, it's less likely that you're realizing uh, what's going on. Okay, the limitations for this is that your clients, they need to be very intelligent and verbal. Right? Sometimes uh, if they start a conversations and then they have this very uh, divergent thinking, they will talk about anything but the problem. Okay. And then there are mixed findings about the effectiveness for this type of therapy. So it really depends on the situation that you have it. It works for some patients, and it doesn't work in certain situations. Okay, that's it. We are right on time. So if you don't have any questions, um, I'll see you next week. And then if you're here for the Jade, uh, I think there are less than 20 people sign up on the Excel sheet, so not too worried. Um, and you can just come here and pick it up. Oh, I, I do like the first time. All right.
So it's gonna be random. Let me say. Mm -hmm. I forgot. I forgot to sign up for this. Yeah. Uh, you have to wait for the person who signed up first. If you're interested, we can talk about it when not many people are here. Because okay, okay. um, I I don't know if people will get offended. I'll, right. I'll add you next time. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. Why? Uh, I had a, when I came here and then I'm going back. I don't want to bring back to China again. So <laughs> I'll just, yeah, yeah. Thank you, mm -hmm, no problem. You want one? Uh 
Besides the quiz, I don't think there's anything uh, to do. And then I think I'm going to finish the class much early. So I might try to finish everything in next week. Okay. So there's no class after that. Okay. That's like No, uh, next week it will be eight classes, but oh, I'll be two. After. Yeah, I'll be two lectures ahead. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Um, yeah. yeah, African lost one of your coins. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, no. so you gave me five, and then yeah. I put it in my pockets. When I got home, there were only four. I wonder um, where it went. Maybe it's in your car. Maybe you thought it's possible. Like, I was looking here.